YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Big H Trucking. Sitting here in uh, TA in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky. A little cold, had to throw the sweatshirt on again. Typically don't wear sweatshirts all that much. But today is one of those mornings where I needed a little sweatshirt. Anyway, here's the latest update with my truck. As you guys well know, I've been documenting my frustrations with this Peterbilt. Um, just to rehash, it started with the DEF system. And it went to the market lights with the software update. Then it went to whatever, brake chamber, which is no big deal. Things going to happen. Um, and it's like every week it's been it's been going on and on and on. Um, so it, apparently what's going on with my truck was my water slash fuel filter separator filter thing, a jig, was uh, pretty much completely clogged. And I just did a PM 30,000 43 months ago, for lack of better words. A little more than 60,000 miles, just about 60,000 miles. So apparently, I've been picking up and you know, I was talking to a mechanic. He seemed kind of, you know, he seemed knowledge, knowledgeable. And thank God they had the filter. That was, they only had two. I got one of the two. Because I, if you watch my previous video, I called five TAs and to no avail. There was no, none of these filters available. So, um, I drove, I deadheaded 200 and plus miles up to this place because I was on my way to back to a terminal. And so I made one last call. They said, it's possible. We're not hundred percent sure. So this is the way I was going to go back to Pittston anyway. It was the shortest of, of the, where I was positioned at the time. It was the shortest distance. Thankfully I got here and they ultimately, they did have it. And as the guy said, it's amazing from the color of this filter, it was like the color of tar, that you made it as far as you did. Um, so I did. So remarkably, thank God, I made it to where I needed me to. We, we got it done. I was on a waiting list for several hours. I didn't care. I'm not under a load. It had to be taken care of. Otherwise, I can't move forward. So hopefully, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Hopefully, this is my last incident for at least several weeks, all right? I just need to run a couple weeks consecutively without something or another pulling me off a load. My advice to you is there's a TA, it's exit 181 on 75 North in just shy of, well, it's in Lexington, Kentucky. Do not come here unless it is an emergency. Right now, there's no way I can get out because I've got trucks in front of me, another truck in front of that truck, and another truck in front of that truck. So ultimately, they came around last night and they checked everybody to make sure we all paid the money. But then when I, when I went outside and I questioned the guy, I said, well, what about these trucks right here? We're, we have to pay $15 to park here. But yet those trucks can sit here. Now it's gonna inconvenience me if I need to get out because you're not enforcing that no parking zone. You're breaking everybody else's chops, and, and rightly so. And I said, I, I totally get that. But that should be taken care of. There's no reason why, if I get called right now, because I'm waiting for a load to come through, I message dispatch, so I'm ready to go. If I need to get out of here, I have to knock on one, two, three, four trucks door and tell them to get out of the way. And I'm sure I've done it before. I'm sure you guys, if you knocked on driver's door, they're not the most pleasant. Some of them are, some of them aren't. And they're grumpy and it's like, bro, you know, dude, you're in my way. I got to get out. First of all, giving me an attitude, it's totally wrong because you're parked in a no parking zone. It specifically says no parking, but I guess whatever. No parking doesn't apply to you. But anyway, so I walked in there now just to get some breakfast. And I said to the gal, I said, you know, if I need to get out this, there's three trucks, four trucks that I need to knock on doors. Do I have to do that or do you do that? No, we don't do that. So don't come. It's too tight. It's it's crazy. I'm so worried about getting uh, my truck clipped. It's an absolutely it's an absolute nightmare. And uh, 
but thankfully I'll overlook the nightmare of staying here because I got my truck fixed. So that's my gripe for today. This truck stop should be avoided at all costs unless you're stopping here only for fuel and getting out. And even then, I've seen trucks four or five trucks deep on the fuel line. So if you're in a rush, this is not the place to come. If you're out of time, forget about parking here because it's 8 o'clock, 8.30 in the morning, 9.30 in the morning, and this place, nobody's moved. Nobody's moved in my row yet. So apparently there's nothing happening in Kentucky on Sundays because there ain't nobody moving, including me. I messaged my dispatch, or weekend dispatch at what time? 7.15 this morning, told him I'm ready to go. And uh, it's two hours later, I haven't even been even thought about being dispatched on a load. So I don't know what's going on in Kentucky, but I'm really close to Ohio. So I don't have any problems jumping up to Ohio to pick up a load, but I need to go. I need to make some money, folks, money. All right, enjoy your day. Next week is Christmas already, so just stay safe. You know, I know there's a lot of commentary about that that kid, that man, who got 110 years in jail for, for that truck driving incident on I-70 in Colorado a few years back. You know, I don't know what your stance is. I think they should have went after the company more than the kid. You know, the kid had a clean record. Yes, you know, he did pass two truck ramps that he should have taken, knowing that his brakes were heating up. But, you know, this is what happens when you get into a truck who's never had experience. And again, that's why when I initially got my CDL, years ago I had a CDL, I never told that story. But nobody would, would want to give me a job. And I would say to them, well, how do you supposed to get a job as a truck driver if no one's willing to give you the, the experience? But I kind of understand that. I was a lot younger when I did get my CDL. It was actually called a chauffeur's license at that time. That's dating me. This is before my white collar career kind of took off. Um, but nobody would want to give me a chance. And, and I understand somebody put that kid in a truck going down mountains that he's never done before and sent him on his way without teaching him how to use jake brakes and so on and so forth so now i kind of understand as i got older why it's crucial that you need to come to a company like a prime not per se prime itself but a company that has a good training program it's in, it's important to understand the dynamics of a truck and what a truck can do when it goes out of when it gets out of control, so I don't want to get into that part. I feel that the sentence is way too long. There's people that do more heinous crimes that get off um, a lot quicker or don't even serve time. But there's neither here, neither, neither here nor there. But there is a big petition. I believe there's really already four million signatures. Will they commute his sentence? I have no idea. I hope they do. I mean. The kid is sorry, and the family even forgave him for what they what he did. But he didn't use his best judgment and get off the get off the road. He just continued down down a mountain road, riding his brakes until it caught on fire, and he had no brakes and wiped out a complete family. So it's an unfortunate situation, but um, this teaches you go get proper training. With that being said, I'm shutting up. I'm gonna have some breakfast. Keep my fingers crossed and I get a good load out of here today and we go from there. Peace out, be safe, make smart decisions and get out and look around if you're not sure on your, on your surroundings. Peace out.